five and three. Uh, yeah, welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast Live, Wednesday night edition. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hope everybody's good. Um, right now we're going to hold it up just a couple minutes and uh, see uh, see if we get some people up in the chat. Um, in the meantime, Transformer, what's good with you, man? How you doing? Man, not much, brother. Living a good life as always. Another day, another <laughs> breath taken. That's it. Another dub by the Lakers, man. How you feeling? Not mad at that. Not mad at that. Dub by the Lakers, dub by the Celtics. Uh, the NBA can't ask for nothing better than that, right? I mean, you're, you're right. right. In that sense, you're right. <laughs> yeah, in that sense, you're the two most storied franchises That's in it. NBA history, they both That's right. got a dub and open a night. That's pretty dope. Yeah. yeah. Oh, only thing better is if we see them wind up in the finals. That would be, obviously, you know. Boy. That is what the NBA is built on. <laughs> you you want to talk about, I'm not going to be able to be on a podcast with you for like a week and a half? <laughs> I'm not going to be able to talk, bro. Don't talk to me. You're not lying. <laughs> I'm not going to talk to you. I'm lying. Hey, if we have to make a truce. Before we start off, it's going to be, all right, guys, before we get started on the format podcast, me and Bryant right now are making a truce. Truce. Don't talk no Celtic, no Lakers. <laughs> Until the finals right. is over, don't talk nothing. When the finals is over, then we'll go back through the whole thing. But until then, <laughs> we we can talk about NFL, free agency, baseball, something. Now we, hey, we talk can talk about, about everything under the sun. Don't talk everything about everything under the sun. That's a fact. That's a fact. Oh hey, man, my wife. Uh, we was watching the Green Bay game, right? And of course, you know it mm. was a freaking. It was. Oh, it was. It was nerve wracking. And mm -hmm. I can see my wife, like she went from cheering and then mm -hmm. I started getting pissed off. I started throwing my shirt. Mm -hmm. Like I punched a box. <laughs> she, was just like, <laughs> she got on her phone. She was like, oh my God, somebody come and save me. This man is about to go crazy. I'm like, so imagine right. if it's Boston Celtics versus the Lakers in the finals. Oof. I'm like, T, I'm, I'm honestly just going to have to leave the house. Like I can't be <laughs> home. I'm, I'm not going to be able to be home. Like I don't care. I'm going to have to be home. Yeah. I'd rather put it on my phone and sit in the car. Crazy, right? Get me away, because I don't. You know what? No, we owe y'all one because the last time we played y'all in the finals was uh, God bless the dead. The Mamba, the Mamba you know, did his thing, and and, and y'all um, y'all handled business. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm still not feeling too good about that. I respect it, but I don't like it. Tyler, you what's know? good? How are you? Tyler, what's good, baby? <laughs> but yeah, man, I respect it. Definitely don't like it. Of course, you know, you know, Jeez. just like 08, You know what I'm saying? When uh, when we did what we had to do. You know, oh, it was like a pandemic type of year, right? It wasn't a you know pandemic I mean? type year, yeah, man. It was like a bubble. It was a recession. It was Everybody bubble. was broke. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, and and Boston just got it the easy way, man. They just they truly got you the got easy to be way. Kidding me, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, whatever. Just like, hey, we don't count the bubble championship for the Lakers. We ain't counting the Boston uh recession championship. Okay, that wasn't no recession <laughs> shit, man. Listen, man, you are killing me. <laughs> Oh my all goodness! All love, all love, man. All, all love. Count Respect if, they, if they're logged, okay, they logged yes, them. They count. <laughs> I, I guess we got to look at it that way. But oh, um, I will. there you go. But uh, we got some good topics for y'all tonight. Uh, obviously, it's Wednesday, so we're gonna do our pick 'em. Um, hopefully, G shows up and we can get get him in on that. But uh, he may not be here tonight. Uh, Shannon, then we have our, what's all right, up? Shannon. <laughs> Then we have Joel Embiid, and uh, well, we got a lot, a lot to talk about with this guy. Uh, <sighs> um, then we, uh, for our main topic of the night, we will talk about the history that was made in Hollywood last night. Because um, no matter how you feel about it, it was uh, it was something that we may never see again. And so, obviously, that's a that's an, a huge thing, right? We may never see that again. True. We most likely won't see that again. So, just yeah. you know, to acknowledge the. Um, I don't even know the word, but uh, just to acknowledge how huge of a moment that was uh, for a number of reasons, um, we'll, we'll do some talking about that. And then finally, we're going to talk about arguably the two best teams in the NFL, uh, the, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens. So uh, it's going to be a fun show. It's going to be a fun show. No, there's no. <clears throat> no. Y'all are very good. You're not one of the best teams in the NFL what? right now. Nah, man. See, here you go. What's the, what's the record, Bruce? What's the records? Okay, five and two, five and two. Okay, yes, I I understand that, but right, you you're not when 
Well, the eye test says to me, y'all not one of the best teams in, in the league. Okay, You're very good. Just because better than the Lions. Like that, you know what I mean? It's okay. No. Okay, all right. It's all okay. Right. We're five it's and not two. I'm saying you can't be. I'm not saying you can't be. We're also five and two. Just Dude. a better five and two than you. Ow! <laughs> you <laughs> just look at the record, I'm, man. You, you see what we're doing to people out here, man. Hey man, you know a dub is a dub. I don't care if it's about one point. That's true. You know what That's I mean? true. A dub is a dub. You, you call true, it out. I mean, you know what I mean? Game of inches, baby. All right, all right. I mean, we do have the number one offense in the in the league, so that, that's huge. And we got top five in, in defense, so you know. What I mean? I'm just yeah, saying, you know, I'm surprised about that. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I'm yeah. surprised. And we yeah. just add another piece. We're gonna make that a quick hit. Here yeah, shortly. yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's um. Yeah. So before we get to the quick hits, y'all. Uh, you know what time it is. Let's do that, and then we'll get this thing started. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio-only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give us that like, that five-star review, and drop a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. And finally, make sure you write it down, put it in your phone, set an alarm, do whatever you got to do to remember. Saturday nights at 7 p.m., we are live here on the Format Podcast, and we'll give you the opportunity to call in, talk to us, get at me. I love it. I can't all right, team. All right. Well, let's get right to it. Um, let's let's. All right. All right. So, uh, I'll 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 start here. So, Joel Embiid, man. Um, he's actually, believe it or not, one of my favorite players in the modern NBA. Although he is so reflective of the modern NBA, um, I like Embiid a lot, but he also frustrates the hell out of me as a basketball player. I like him because, as you all know, I am a huge Elijahwan fan, and uh, as you can see, he has uh, a lot of the Elijahwan esque type uh, moves in his in his bag, right? A lot of tools in, in in his uh in his bag there, a lot of skills. And so I look at him, I th- he's the most, he's easily, easily, yes, I said it, easily the best big in the league when he's healthy, which that's that's the problem, right? Because when he's healthy, there's nobody that can guard this man. And we, and we see it time and time again, right? But he's almost never healthy. That's the other problem. But yeah, um, so Embiid is uh the only MVP ever now to not make a conference final, and that's a big problem. So, <laughs> so now, um, now you've got the situation where Embiid is trying to do everything that he can do in order to uh, get to winning a championship, right? Except, of course, for getting in the weight room and getting right and uh, putting himself in position where physically he's able to uh, take what it takes to to do what it takes. Excuse me, to last through an entire season. Uh, Laker Nation says. You are biased. Are you speaking to me or are you talking to Steve, Laker Nation? Um, uh, let's see. Steve says, and beat is a perfect example of why folks like Bruce and I call out the modern NBA and his mentality. Absolutely. Dude is talented, but he's soft, dirty, not the best big in the league because of availability. Okay, Steve, I will give you that. If availability is your argument, you get, you get no complaints from me. I'm, I'm just looking at skills because... When those dudes, okay, me, all right, hang on. So when when those oh, dudes, the modern NBA talk, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, the modern NBA talk. So when when every other big plays against him, they get demolished. Like they can't deal with him. So that's why I say he's the best big in, in the NBA. So um, yeah, Embiid, um, Laker Nation says I'm biased. Okay, that's cool. I respect your opinion. I don't agree, but I respect your opinion. I can see why you might say that though. All right. So anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, MB, man, I, I, th- I think he's, I think he has the ability and a lot of times he is that guy, but again, can't stay healthy. And you know, that that's a major thing. So before I go on with the MB piece, um, where are you on Joel MB transformer? Everything you said with the exception of what we're about to talk about mm-hmm. best pig in the league, hands down, you finally get you an MVP, but yet you come out with this nonsense. Yes. I, what 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 is it? Just just go ahead and get to it, brother. I'm, my my, my bad. I, I'm all, I'm already re- ready to go ham on what he yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I um, get it. But like you said, man. Bet I, when he's when he's locked in, when he's available, and they say the best thing is availability. You gotta have availability, you know. Um, but he's the he's dominant. You know what I mean? You saw what he did mm-hmm. every time he plays Jokic. He puts that man in a box. Right. He puts him in a box every time. You can't do that, anything and, and Jokic, with him. 
Jokic is what a back to back MVP, NBA final up, uh, a finals MVP, mm-hmm. uh, NBA mm-hmm. champion. And he puts him in a box. Jo- Jokic goes, Yo, yo, look, I'm not even trying to do nothing mm-hmm. with you, big dog. You got it. And and B just, you know, pol- polarizes him. But yeah, but yeah, man, I, I, I like him. I think his his work ethic just is suspect to say it's, the least. It's, it's, it's very, very suspect. I mean, especially mm-hmm. what we're about to talk about. So go ahead, brother. Yeah, yeah. And and so that that's that is part of the problem, right? I think we all agree that his work ethic needs work. But again, the problem is look what we are measuring the work ethic on, right? Like we know, uh, y'all know I'm not a LeBron guy, but we know LeBron puts in the time with his body, right? We know that. Um, we know that Kobe and Mike were the ultimate workers, right? Probably right there with Bird and Magic and Isaiah, right? But maybe that's the problem is that we're measuring everybody's work ethic against those guys. And that's not really fair to other guys. You know what I'm saying? So there's that. But but I think the next problem is um, some guys are just injury prone. That's the other problem. Like, I don't think anyone can say Kawhi doesn't work extremely hard. His body just won't. His, his body won't agree. His body won't take care of him. I think Kawhi tries really, really hard. But anyway, this is what really made me um uh, want to do this topic because I heard Embiid say something <laughs> that I believe was completely and utterly ridiculous. And Stephen A. Smith is going to address it. So let's, let's get to that. Another NBA superstar on Team USA, Joel Embiid, recently did an interview with the New York Times, the same one where he lamented the lack of youth on USA's Olympic roster. And he was asked whether injuries are the thing keeping him from being in the GOAT conversation. Listen to his response. Quote, I think so. I think I'm that talented. Obviously, you need to win championships. And to win championships, you need other guys. You can't do it by yourself. I want to win so bad. If it doesn't happen, maybe it wasn't meant to happen. The thing that stopped me all these years is just freaking injuries. Every single playoffs, regular season, people falling on my knee or breaking my face twice. It's always freak injuries at the wrong time, end quote. Those injuries have certainly played a role in Embiid never getting out of the second round of the playoffs. He has had all-star teammates in the young Ben Simmons, Jimmy Butler, James Harden, and Tyrese Maxey. We'll see how this season goes with Paul George, but despite being an NBA MVP and two-time scoring champion, Embiid has missed 204 games in his career the equivalent of over two entire NBA seasons. That's like two and a half seasons. But yeah, that's crazy. So, all right. So the, the main reason that uh, I wanted to do this topic, I don't think I ever explained that, was one, and be coming out and openly saying he doesn't believe he'll ever play back-to-backs for the rest of his career, mm-hmm. which really pissed me off. Um, obviously, he's making a ton of money. He's playing in a less physical league. He's one of the dominant bigs. There's not a lot of great bigs. And he's saying that he won't play back to backs. Uh, what? What? Like that really upset me. And then the second part of it, if you heard in, in the quote that Stephen A just addressed, somebody actually asked him and beat about what his thoughts were on his place in the GOAT debate. And he had the nerve to say that if he could stay healthy, that he believes that he would be in the GOAT debate. And I'm like, are you stupid? Are you stupid? Like, and, and remember, I'm the guy who just finished saying I love Embiid. I'm a big fan of his game, although sometimes he pisses me off the way he consistently bails out the defense shooting threes instead of getting his big butt down on the block and dominating the way he should. But anyway, that's a different story. But the point is the fact that he came out and said that he probably won't play back to backs for the rest of his career. The season just started. He's not playing tonight. He and Paul George. And on top of that, he said that he believes he has the talent to be in the GOAT debate. Big problem here, right? Let, let's go with the GOAT debate piece first. Mm-hmm. How can you say that if you're Embiid and you're playing in such a weak big man era? Are you playing against Hakeem and Patrick Ewing and Alonzo Mourning and Dikembe Mutombo and Patrick Ewing and all these guys every night? Imagine you got to play against at least one of those guys once a week. Imagine that. Shaq. Embiid knows nothing about Shaq. I'm so sorry. I, wow. Mutombo. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Like, like you, you're not going against that and you're still hurt all the time. And man, come on, man. Do, do, okay. 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Like I get irritated when I hear that stuff, because again, his skill set is crazy. His skill set is crazy. And like I said, we see him when he goes against Jokic. I think the last game they played against each other, he had like 45, 45 17. Like, yeah, he killed them. 50. Yeah. Des- yeah. Destroyed him. And it good. Cause you know, people, Oh, Jokic's the best big and be really hold my beer, you know? So <laughs> he gets upset about that, but 
it, it's it's really um frustrating to me. So before I go on to the next clip, Transformer, your thoughts on uh Embiid saying that he believes he would be in the GOAT conversation if he could stay healthy and that he doesn't believe he'll be playing back to backs for the rest of his career. I believe if I was to sit here long enough and think about my inner chi and mm -hmm. it exploding mm -hmm. out of my body, I can turn Super Saiyan. Okay, I was about to say you'd be like Iron Fist. Okay, yeah, right. I'll, I'll, I'll turn Super Saiyan. Yeah, I believe it. I, I believe if I was to sit here long enough and channel my energy, right, yeah, 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 my Green Bay Packer, Los Angeles Laker energy, mm -hmm. and I sit mm -hmm. here and I just focus on powering up for like five minutes, I mm -hmm. can go Super Saiyan. Does that mean I will? No. Does that mean? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. What the hell is Embiid talking about, bro? I don't know. I don't know. Everybody believes that they could be in a goat debate, but seriously, oh man, like. You have to be available to be a goat. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta be yeah. one. You gotta be available. Now, I sl slightly. I'm, I'm gonna play a little bit of devil's advocate here because mm -hmm. I do believe if he's to stay healthy, right, mm -hmm. he could have been in that goat debate. Look at his last four years. I'm gonna just put his last four years in the vacuum. Okay, 28, 28 and a half points per game, ten mm -hmm. rebounds, three assists, a block and a half. Uh, next year, thirty point thirty point six points per game. 11.7 rebounds, four assists, mm -hmm. one steal, a block per game. Next year, the MVP season, 33 mm -hmm. points per game, 10 rebounds, uh, four assists, one block, one steal. Just last season, 34.7 points per game, 11 rebounds, five assists, mm -hmm. one block, one steal. You look at that and you're like, God mm -hmm. damn it. That man is freaking elite, right? But then let mm -hmm. me not stop you there. Let's look at game the first season, which I explained. 51 games played. Next season, 68 games played. Next season, mm -hmm. 66 games played. Last season, 39 games played. Mm -hmm. Bro, you're just not available, bro. Always something. Always <laughs> it's something. always something. And when the matter, <clears throat> when the moment matters the most, and that's the playoffs, granted, if it's your body, it's your body. But sometimes I think it's your yeah. heart, bro. It's your heart. Yeah, your heart literally got to go out there and yeah. lay it on the line. That's right. Lay it out all on the line. If you're, if you're, right. if you're playing in a game, I don't want to hear – you just bring up the injury or you bring up that you were hurt, bro. Bump mm -hmm. all that. You're available. You're on the court. At that point, hey, man, I, I gave him my all. No matter the circumstance, I went in there and I played my mm -hmm. best. Right. Don't, just say that. Don't yeah. don't give me this, you know, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, the injuries and I've been riddling me all oh, year and uh, I couldn't, you know, my back just kept tightening up, but, you know, my back leg on my big toe and then on the other side, my stomach was hurting and I had the boo-boo real bad, but the boo-boo didn't come out good. So, you know, I'm, whatever, bro, stop it. Yeah, yeah, stop yeah. It, sure. just, That's a fact. Just, you know That's what I mean? But I, I, don't, I don't get where the hell he was going with that. I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I believe I can fly. I believe mm -hmm. I can touch the sky. I think about right. it every night and day. Spread my wings <laughs> and fly away. Well, well, I believe I believe that I, although I'm a 100 percent disabled veteran, that I can go back into the army and make Delta Force selection right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I can do it. I can do it. If it wasn't for injuries, I'd be Delta. Yeah, okay. Yo, come <laughs> on, man. Like, nah, I, I, I get. I can believe a lot, man. But it's just mm -hmm. you, you. But granted, bro, when you're available, you're one of the best. Like one of the best mm -hmm. that we've seen in this modern era at that yeah. position. You know, no what I mean? like we're not no taking doubt. that away from you, but. Mm -hmm. you know to just jump like from, I just finally got an mvp but i've mm -hmm. never never made the conference finals i've That's never right. made the, the only MVP. mvp ever not only, to do it only not to do it but i belong in that goat debate and you're saying i just didn't have the better teams i just mm -hmm. i don't believe I, I just can't roll with it brother I just can't right, roll right, with right. It. willie brown i haven't seen you before i think you're new is he new willie brown you seen willie him before brown, no. yeah all right, what's he up, Willie? Like a, he looks like a veteran. Yeah. Now. I think he's he a looks surprise. like one. Yeah, yeah. he's some. <laughs> he's some in that avatar. Uh, welcome to the channel, Willie Brown. I appreciate you, man. Go ahead, click that like and subscribe and that notification bell and hit that share button, brother. Oh, you been, oh, yeah, been here before? Okay. All right. Well, thanks for coming back, then, man. I appreciate it. I All right, you, man. Tell us to shut yeah. up and, and sit down when, when right? you come in. That's what he said. I've been I'm here. I've been here. Right. Shut up and sit down. I ain't new, man. Get back to talk about MB. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Stephen A's uh, second comment here on this topic. Without injuries, I have no problem with him being in the GOAT conversation. Let me tell you something right now. That brother with his skill set at 7'1", 
back to the basket, facing the basket, the ability to put the ball on the floor, the finesse game, the power game, three-point shooting game, the list goes on and on. I'm looking at his numbers here. Do you know that Embiid has averaged over 30 over the last three seasons, along with 11 rebounds? By the way, not only is he shooting what he's shooting from the field, 49, 54, and 52% from the field, 53% from the field this past season. Not only is he a career 50.50% shooter from the field, he's also a career 34% shooter from three-point range. You usually don't see that from a center in the National Basketball Association. But that's who he is. Joel Embiid is special. Make no mistake about it. He is special. But GOAT debate, nah. No. Not close. Not close. No. And, and part of it, again, like I mentioned, is not necessarily his fault. He just doesn't play in an era with enough competition. And real quick, um, I don't want to make this uh, an Embiid versus Jokic debate. That was not at all the, the, the point of this. But for those of you all in the chat who are saying Jokic, 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 cool. Let's keep this simple. We can take Embiid completely out of it. How can Jokic be the best player in the world when he only plays one side of the ball? We got to stop this. We have to stop this. Defense matters, too. Defense matters too. And since Jokic is a poor defender, I don't care what the advanced analytics say. We can watch with our eyes and see Jokic can't guard anyone. He's a poor defender. He cannot be the best player in the world. Plain and simple. That's it. All right. Moving right along. Um, so, yeah. So, so uh, last night, obviously, was the opening of the NBA season. And uh, you had Charles Barkley and Shaq, of course, on uh, Inside the NBA. And they had some quick comments. Now, this, this is um, cut. Uh, I couldn't find the whole comment. I don't know why it wasn't available, but this, this comment was these comments, excuse me, about Embiid were cut from uh, some longer content that they had on inside the NBA last night, but it was enough to kind of make sense in what he said. And then we'll come back and comment on that. I was so disappointed in Joel Embiid saying he wasn't going to play back to back game. You cannot say as a leader of that team, I'm not going to play certain games. I thought that was a bad message. The league isn't that physical for him to say that. You pick and pop. You don't get double. You don't get triple. You don't get flagrant foul. There's no reason to say I'm not playing back to back. Now, I, I get what Shaq was saying. And Shaq is saying, I know what it is to be a dominant big and to constantly be getting hacked, right? Hack a Shaq. We know that. Yep. Constantly getting hacked. Constantly getting double teamed. Constantly getting triple teamed. I know what that is. And for the most part, unless I was really hurt, I was out there playing. And that's true. That's true. So I get that. But again, that's why Embiid is not the same as those guys. Right. What is it? They're not like us. He's, he's not wired the same. You know what I mean? And so that's the difference. And also, I like what Charles Barkley said um, as the leader of the team. And that's something we didn't even address the leadership piece as the leader. You can't come out and say that. Right. Even if that's how you feel. And even if you talk to the coaching staff or the trainers or what have you, you know, behind everybody. And you say, well, this is what the plan is going to be. You don't come out and publicly say that. How do you lead? Keep that in closed doors. Yeah. How do you lead when you're not showing that you're you're demonstrating to put it all, you're willing, excuse me, to put it all on the line for the team, right? All, think about it. All the greats, we always talk about them. They showed you that they were willing to put their bodies on the line for the team and for winning. And Embiid says he wants to win so badly. But does he really? Does he really? You know. And if, I, in fairness, though, oh, my bad. And one more thing. In fairness, I can't blame it all on him or on the modern athlete because, unfortunately, a big part of this is because of us. Who? The fans and the media, right? Ring culture. Mm -hmm. So we're telling them, hey, rings is the only rings are, excuse me, the only thing that matters. And if you don't get a ring, you're trash, you're a bum, you're terrible. Not necessarily true, but I mean, there are separators like we always talk about. There are separators in greatness. And if you don't win championships, well, you know, that's what that's what all the all time greats really, really played for. But um it's tough to me that Embiid kind of wants to do the LeBron thing and to some extent kind of uh, he wants to skip the work. Right. So he's saying, well, I'll only play one half of the back to backs and in the playoffs, I'll be able to show up. No, you got to get your body ready because in the playoffs, you still have to play game after game and you only get one game one night in between the games. So your body is not going to be ready for the rigors of a long playoff run. But I don't know. Go ahead. Transform The man makes $59 million a year. It's a lot of money. Next year, he makes $64 million a year. Final season in his contract, he makes $69 million a year. <coughs> what the fuck are you to tell me? Facts. You, you ain't going to play back-to-backs. 
Facts. You get paid yeah. the big you bucks because you the big dog, right? That's right. The big dog is always right. the one guarding fence, always the one attacking mm -hmm. the mailman, always the one making sure home is straight and home is good to go. You're mm -hmm. not going to make $60 million a year and mm -hmm. tell me what the hell you going to do. Mm -hmm. That's just point blank and simple, bro. As the owner, Daryl Morey, all y'all GM and coach, hey, yo, hold up. You said what? Boy, if you... If you ain't hurt, you're playing. That's simple, bro. If you ain't mm -hmm. hurt, you playing. It's not like you're old. Like mm -hmm. it's not like you're old. You're only turning what 32 this season, so you're not old. You know what I mean? Are right. you hurt? No, you're not. Okay, well, look, your, that paycheck clear, didn't it? Okay, say less. Sure, yeah. That means you're playing. that means you're playing. You're not hurt, and the paycheck cleared. Play game, bro. I, don't come out in public. Like I said, you could have kept that in closed doors, and you know we're not gonna watch all 82 games. And if you just so happen. You know, game 52 and 53, you kind of half-assed it in the second half of 53. Then, okay, we're probably not going to notice it. But guess what? But we're not going to shine light on it. Mm -hmm. But you coming out with us in the forefront, and you and my, uh, Paul George <laughs> more than likely not going to do back-to-backs because, Facts. you know, you need more time. Like, come on, man. Like, mm -hmm. that, that, that's just not it, bro. You can't be 35% of my cap hit and tell me you ain't finna play back-to-backs. Telling me you're not gonna play a game, period, is beyond me. Now, if you're hurt, you're hurt. But if you're not hurt, play the game, bro. Because you can take look at Kawhi Leonard, all that low managing and stuff that he was doing. Guess what no. he's still doing on the sideline, bro? Mm -hmm. You on the sideline, you can get hurt walking down the street, step on a curb, roll your ankle. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change the fact that I just went out there and I was on a football field all day and running up and down that field. I didn't get hurt, but I come home, I step on the curb, I roll my ankle, hurt. Bro, play the game. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a contact sport. Just fuck, just deal with it, man. That's, mm -hmm. that's so off, bro. Right, from, right. Oh, from a guy like MB, where, like I said, the man is just dominant. When the man's in the game, mm -hmm. the man is dominant, bro. Can't deal with him. You can't Facts. stop him. He can nope. shoot over you. He can put mm -hmm. you in a post. He can put you on a block. Not only that, he's defending the rim. You ain't gonna just drive by him. Yeah, he can nope. chase you down. He's protect. Like, come on, man. He's doing. He's doing everything he needs to do mm -hmm. when he's in the game. But, bro, saying that that's not showing one goat that you that you said. I, I think I am. That's not saying goat, mm -hmm. right? That's also not saying leader. You know what I mean? Nope. Because that that third guy up, Tyrese Mac, uh, uh, yeah, Tyrese Maxey, right? Yeah, Tyrese Maxey. What is he looking at now? He's like, oh, man, we get to take games off if we like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now when mm -hmm. he take a game off, he's like, but shit, bro, you, I, as Joel Embiid, the leader of the team, I can't go to Tyrese Max and be like, bro, man, come on, bro, you need to be better. You need to make every game matter. No, nah, bro, you don't make every game matter. You sit down and go back to backs. What are you coming at me for? You take games off when you when you good. So don't come at me about, you know, I'm taking a game off. I'm not having a good game. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. I, I want to walk to the bench. What are you to tell me now? So at that, you lose your, you lose the locker room when you make conversations like that because it might be some young buck and Tyree Smacks and maybe one of them like, bro, I'm gonna play every freaking game, bro. I'm trying to win. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to a championship. I'm trying to get that big bag, another big bag, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just beyond me, bro. I, I don't like it. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I hear you. Um, let me respond to this. As Steve said, this narrative and beat is some elite defender is nuts. Dude's lazy most of the time. He plays at a high level when he knows people are watching in the regular season. Playoff time, he's lazy. So first, right, let's not be disingenuous here, Steve. I don't know where you heard anyone say that Embiid is some elite defender. But the fact is, he's clearly better defender than Jokic. Like, there's no question about that. Jokic don't even try on D and he can't move his feet. So let's let's not do that. No one is saying that. And beat is, you know, prime Hakeem Olajuwon or prime David Robinson. No one is saying that, or even Patrick Ewing. But he is a better defender than Jokic. That's just that just is what it is. Like you just got to use your eyes and watch that. Um, three-time MVP is more dominant. Laker Nation okay. says. Laker Nation. I don't, I'm gonna stop you right there, Bruce. I'm gonna take this away. Right yeah, do it. Laker Nation. Is Steve Nash better than Kobe Bryant? There He's you go. Than Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. him. That don't matter, bro. That's just. Mm -hmm. that, that, Double, double, you know what I'm saying? Season they got that from Russell yeah. Westbrook, one of the first centers to ever do it. And and your foreign, I'm not going to talk about how they treat foreign players. They try to make mm -hmm. that thing nowadays. But Facts. that three MVPs don't make you more dominant. Now that don't make you the most dominant because if that's the case, Steve Nash is more dominant than Kobe Bryant. And I don't think no mm -hmm. one in the heavens, hell or earth is going to tell you <laughs> that Steve Nash 
was more Correct. dominant than Kobe Bryant. So there you go. Yep. All right. Outstanding retort. I appreciate that. Um, all right, cool. So we got some more on this whole Embiid thing. So here's another problem, right? So because of this openly saying that uh, he's not going to play back to backs and the Sixers pretty much announcing that he nor Paul George will likely be playing back to backs. We got some interesting news that came out today uh, via Sham Sharanya, the newest uh, insider now that Woj is going at ESPN. Uh -oh. Check this out. I'm told by multiple sources, Malika, that the NBA is set to start an investigation later this week into the Philadelphia 76ers and this situation surrounding Joel Embiid and whether they are in violation of the player participation policy. And this is a complicated situation for the league, for the Sixers, and obviously Joel Embiid, because it's it's not black and white in terms of there is no specific injury. Like with Kawhi Leonard, we know he's got that swelling sure. in his in his knee. With, with Chris Middleton, we know that he has double ankle surgeries that he's coming off of. With Joel Embiid, it's been a lot of the new normal that we've been told in terms of the periodic time off that he is scheduled to take this upcoming season, um, as well as making sure in his perspective that he is 100% for the playoffs. He has not been his entire NBA career. So this is really the Philadelphia 76 76ers strategy for the mm. season on how they can best approach it. And that is how they want to go about it. Does the league have an issue with it? We are going to find out very soon. What do you think of that? <laughs> it's going to be a big issue. It's gonna be some yeah. furniture moving around his mother. What the hell is he playing? <laughs> right? I mean, what do you ask for? You, for? you, you make it a whole of a lot of money. My bad, my bad. Go ahead, brother. Say what you said again. I don't think nobody. My bad. No, I, I was saying just like you said, he's making a whole hell of a lot of money. Fans are paying a whole hell of a lot of money to go see him. Man, suit up and play, man. Even even if you're only gonna play 15 minutes, get out there and do it. Right? Get out there. Right. And play the basket. Yeah, like I think load management is a really bad idea and a bad concept because, again, your body has to build up the requisite resistance in order to deal with stresses plus, uh, excuse me, pressed on it. Right. Uh, it's You can't you can't build up the resistance by not playing. That doesn't make sense to me. But uh, that's me. No, I'm, I'm, I, we're paying you 60 million dollars. We're paying you $60 million. That fan right there that's sitting front row, he just paid $2,000 to sit right there to right. watch you play. That's and right. guess what? He didn't just buy that today because he found out oh. that you was benched. He bought that two months ago because mm -hmm. he's a season, season ticket holder. Or he finally had the opportunity once in a lifetime to get front row tickets. Right? And right. you so happen to just tell him, hey, fan, you know, I just played last night, so I'm, I'm a little tired. I'm going to just, you know, take the day off so everybody <laughs> can rest in that play. So hopefully, you know, you still get a good game. The rest of this Philadelphia 76ers are going to play their hearts out and you didn't waste your $2,000 and we get the win. Come on, man. No, bro, I came here to play you. You actually my favorite player. <laughs> hey, I'd be so fucking pissed off if I came to a goddamn Kobe Bryant game and mm -hmm. Kobe Bryant basically looked at me in the stands, flipped me off, and said, "Yeah, I ain't playing today. I played in the back to back." Well, I, well, I, I would, I'm a Loved Celtic. It. I would, I would turn it to a Celtic that fast. Like, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Um, <laughs> Luke Nation, listen, man. I, I, I understand where you're going and what you're trying to say. Right? I get it. And don't get me wrong. I prefer Jokic's mentality about the game and about how he plays to. And beats, I do, but I'm just saying he's not better. Now, does he have some better results? Yes, but he's not better. Like, there's no way that I can say uh, I'm better than Transformer if every time I play against him, he's getting the better of me. That doesn't match up. Now, is basketball a team game? Most certainly, totally get it. So there's some different things, but at the, at its core, at its core, it, it was the same thing with the whole. Um, I don't know if you were on for the whole LeBron doesn't want to play one-on-one -on -one discussion that we had a while back, but it's the same thing there. A lot of people say, well, LeBron is the gold or LeBron is the second best player of all time. But at its core, basketball is, can I stop you and can I get a bucket on you in its purest form? Because when we all start playing basketball, whether it was on the playground or whether it was in the gym, it was let's get a 21 or let's get a one-on-one -on -one or let's get a horse. What is that? Your skills against my skills, who comes out on top? That's what it is. Embiid is better than Jokic. Jokic does not defend, and when they play against each other, he gets done up. I mean, that's 
That's, and and that's not a shot at Jokic because Jokic is very very good. He is. But that, that's just it. Um, <laughs> no doubt, Steve. I got you, bro. Um, yes, Jokic does play a, a, a completely different game. No question about it. But I think and, Jok- Jokic also has a better team and a better coach. Mike I Malone think so. is a hell of a coach. I think so. Well, Embiid has Nick Nurse now, so that's you know. I mean, but he hasn't always had him, right? I think he right, right, got right. him what two years ago. Mm-hmm. What he got there two years or last year? Last year. Last year. So he just got Nick Nurse, right? So other yeah. than that, I mean, he did have one of the most fumbling coaches in you know in the field. I mean, it's not NFL <laughs> history. No, NBA no. history. You know what I mean? Yeah. Totally get it. Totally get it. You got that, and and then yeah. him were paying Tobias Harris to literally show up in uniform and just go mm-hmm. out there and get some PT in, um, for you know physical training and mm-hmm. <laughs> that kind mm-hmm. of game. So. You know, you look at you look at that that especially the championship roster that Denver Nuggets had. Them folks from the starting lineup to the bench, they were they were nice. Like that was a nice team. It was very well put together. Um yeah. when, they, when they had that run, man. Go ahead. Yeah, let me stop you on this. So Steve says, How many all stars has Jokic had? And that is a very good question. I believe the answer is none. However, Steve, however, Think, think about it. A lot of all stars get voted in by the fans, and as you know, just by being here, there's a lot of dumb fans out there. <laughs> you know, not not you guys in the chat tonight, but you, you know what I'm saying. There's a lot of dumb fans out there who say and do dumb things, and so they vote in the guy they like, right? But but at the end of the day, no, Jokic hasn't had a ton of all stars. But I think what we lose track of, and us us older fans kind of realize that it's not always about having a bunch of all stars or Hall of Famers or whatever. Sometimes, and this is where, you know, the LeBron people get to the whole, well, uh, Jordan didn't play anybody in the finals. No, he played extremely well-constructed teams, right? So, no, maybe you don't have those individual superstars or all-stars, but when you have a team that's well-constructed, as we saw with the Nuggets championship team, it can work out. So, I I get what you're saying, Steve, but you know better than to ask that question. But I get it. Yeah. I mean, what do you mean, work out? Not like Tobias Harris just coming in just to get cardio in and call it at the workout. Like we need you to actually contribute in the basketball games. <laughs> Tobias Harris is getting paid $30 million to show up. <laughs> right. Getting paid right. $30 million to show up, man. So I'm not going to, yeah. you know, point at, uh, I'm not going to point directly at him beat about that, but yo, know, yeah, that, that man used to show up and get checks and roll out, bro. I mean, if you're his agent, man, shout out uh, Tobias Harris agent. Cause that man got paid. Yeah, he did, well, bro. Great agent. But uh, but let's yeah. do this. Um, transform. You got anything else? I'm gonna put the number in the chat no. and let's take a couple calls on this because uh, seems like people wanna wanna debate it, and uh, we'll try to get through the get through these calls on this quick, yeah. and then we will get to the monumentous thing that took place in Los Angeles last night. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've right. seen a lot of this MVP. You know, he has three MVPs. MVPs mm-hmm. are and a multitude. Mo- MVPs are a multitude of reasons why you're going to get voted as an MVP. Most valuable player is not the most <laughs> dominant player. Right. Let's let's be a hundred percent honest with it here. If that's the case, Kobe would have got more MVPs. LeBron right. would have got more MVPs. These guys were just would have got more MVPs. Huh? Right. Jordan would have got more MVP. Jordan would have got more MVPs because they're just dominant mm-hmm. players, right? Would have got more MVP, we're, right? We're not right. saying the most va- like is he the most valuable player? Then okay, you, <laughs> Jokic he can assist the ball, rebound the ball, still horrible defensively, but um, and he can also get you a bucket. And you know he like the guys around him, he can make them better, right? But like dominant, when I'm talking about the best big in the league, like you can't stop him no matter what he's doing. That's MB. He's just dominant, the most dominant player, right? Mm-hmm. Steve Nash was never the most dominant player. He played on the Phoenix Suns. They had a better record. They had a better team. And you know, and he, I think he was uh had a, a high a high double double. He was averaging a high double double. Um, with, with also being on the winningest team in the NBA, the hottest team in the NBA, best player on said team. He gets the MVP. Kobe Bryant was dropping thirty every night on on dudes' heads every game. And and still playing lockdown defense on the other side. Still like that. got first team all defense. That's, right? that's the one. That, that's that, the one. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like you know, but Nash was more than MVP. That doesn't mean yeah. that Nash was better than Kobe at at any form of fashion. Nash ain't better than Kobe. No, Nash was dominant. Let nation stop it. Right, Edward. Edward dominant. Jackson, uh, last American player to win an MVP was 2017. James Harden. James Harden. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
that was an infamous. I want to say he had 35 a game or 36. I think it was 36, 36 a game. And, and 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 these fools were talking about he he may be the greatest perimeter player of all. You know what? I'm I'm gonna skip that. All right, I, I put it was the, the best score, best score of all time or something like that. He was that, that was absurd score. too. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, put the number in the chat 904-219-8264. 904-219-8264. It's also scrolling on the bottom of your screen. So um uh let's let's take a couple calls on that. Uh try to keep it quick and then we'll uh we'll get to the next topic. Yeah, let's 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 uh take a couple calls on that because this topic seems to have upset some people. My my stance on Joel and B. And I would love to know how I'm biased. I want to hear that. <laughs> I, I think I think I kind of know where that's coming from, but I'd still love to hear. Um uh, oh what, man, because you everything is old school with you, big dog. That's fair. <laughs> everything <laughs> is old school. Well, I'm not I'm not always a proponent of the old stuff is better, but in certain things, the old stuff is better, right? <laughs> like music, the old stuff is generally better. Um, I'm not gonna argue with you on that one. That's a good. Right. That's a good way to start off your conversation. Proceed. There you go. The <laughs> NBA, the NBA, old stuff is better. I mean, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I don't know. That's uh, that's tough. And that that doesn't mean the new stuff is totally trash. Although in certain cases, man, I don't know. But <laughs> um, yeah, now nah, that the old stuff just I think because you needed more to be better in, in the old days. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I think. Really, all this all this in the chat. No no calls. Well, Steve What's said he can't on? call in for some odd reason. Okay. I think he might be at work or something. He might be at work or something like that, yeah. Lake Nation, go take your smoke break. <laughs> right. Like, hey, man, smoke break. All right, man, call in. Hey, yeah. Smoke yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, let's let's go ahead and switch it up. Um, oh, what was that last comment? Uh, Steve was... says, I don't think you're wrong, Bruce. I see why you believe okay. what you do, but I can't limit this best in the league to a one-on-one -on -one matchup. I'm looking for uh, – here we go. I'm looking for bigger – Landscape, landscape of the NBA. NBA. All right. Well, we got a call. Let's go ahead and take this. Format podcast. Laker Nation, what's good? How y'all doing? Doing all right, brother. Doing all right. I don't know why y'all wanted me to call in. It's the first time we agree to disagree on a subject. <laughs> <laughs> Man, listen, you know. Um, it, we just want to hear it. Sometimes, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, we, we're catching these comments as they're coming in, right? You know, mm -hmm. and we're like trying to respond and trying to also say our piece, but we mm -hmm. want to hear the full, like, you know, what your full observation is. Like, you know, you're saying the three time MVP, um, Jokic has better than over the one that, you know, Embiid clearly has. Um, and then when I bring up the Nash conversation, he was like, oh man, you can't bring Kobe into this. So, yeah, right, pick, one. pick one. Which one is it? Yeah, don't bring, yeah, don't bring Kobe in this. That's a whole different co conversation. But, but it's but, the same no, concept. I was, yeah, I think it was a good I'm analogy. Not, yeah, I'm, but I'm not even going to address that because that's for that's this is not the same situation. Uh huh? This is not. Okay. Um, what I'm going hmm. like I I get what you're saying. Like in, in beef skill set is phenomenal for his size. Mm -hmm. And I get what you guys are saying on a one on one aspect. Yeah, he's he's dominant. But there's more than one aspect to basketball than just being a one-on-one -on -one player that makes you True. better. Okay? Yes. He has a slight advantage on defense. He's a slightly better defender. I give him that. <clears throat> Overall, the body of work, getting, elevating your teammates, as well as doing your job and doing multiple things on the court, Jokic has him beat hands down and it's not even close. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get it. Yeah, there's less dominant bigs in the in the league. Um, there's only a handful, so we can't really. I'm not really going to insult anyone's intelligence by saying, "Oh, Jokic is just, um, it's just on." And they're just in the same class. They're two different type of players. I'll give you that. Yeah, I agree. So I'm not going to insult y'all. Nobody's intelligent with that. Mm -hmm. um, the Euro style is way different than the American style. But without the, we are known obvious as the availability. But second, you can be dominant, but 
When has he ever – I haven't seen Embiid put that team on his back and say, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to get us to where we need to go. Jokic has done that already. Multiple times. Tell me if I'm wrong. You're not wrong. That's why I have, I have Jokic – I give Jokic the edge. Okay. I mean – Oh, it was done I, my bad. I know it was done. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I respect where you're coming from with that. I just, for me, um, I can't overlook the fact that Embiid is better on both sides of the ball and the fact that Jokic simply can't deal with him. Like, I, that's really hard for me to overlook what what he does to him when they play against one another like that. I I have a really yeah, tough get, time overlooking that. Yeah, I get where you're coming from. Like, are you, you're referring it on a one-on-one basis. Um, that's what we do with a lot of debate when you have two players going against each other. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I get that. That's, mm-hmm. That is one, that is a major uh, piece. I mean, uh, I, I'm not going to insult any your, anyone's intelligence and, mm-hmm. and ignore that. Right. Like, I'm non-biased when it comes to these debates. Yeah. Whether my opinion is my opinion, mm-hmm. but I try to give as much factual information I got to back you. up by my claim yeah i'm yeah. not right all the time i'm never going to claim to be right no nah, i get it yeah but that is my analogy as to why i'm not a yoga fan here i'm a lakers fan i can't mm-hmm. stand them they don't okay. whoop our ass they don't whoop our ass the last boy yeah. <laughs> right i'm sick i'm sick of those ugly ass blue jerseys i'm, I'm sick of mike malone and that shit talking he'd be having on the sideline them damn interviews yeah, he definitely. Man, that is, yeah, that's he, a whole nother topic from a whole nother. Yeah, day. he like, definitely. <laughs> yeah, he definitely talks slick. That's kind of funny. I like he it. Always, <laughs> he always got us in his mouth. Pause. Whoa. <laughs> but literally. Yeah, but, um, literally. But I'm not gonna. But I, I gotta give Jokic um his respect. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do too. Yeah. I don't think there. we're disrespecting oh. Jokic. I just think we're we're saying two different things at that point. Right, uh, Jok- Jokic is definitely one of the better, best bigs in the league. I give you that. Mm-hmm. But you know, like I said, no I mean, from what we're looking at, it, it's just who who's the more physically dominant. Like you know, what I mean, like there are certain aspects of Jokic's game where you could just make it a problem for him. It's not really happening that much for Joel Embiid, right? Joel Embiid, you can't have like nobody can really guard him, right? Jokic has trouble against the the, the like the, the perimeter bigs, um, guys with height. You know, like if you, like like you uh, for example, um, our championship run against them in the conference finals. Who do we put on them? Dwight Howard, Javale McGee. Jokic had a terrible time, right. right? You know, he couldn't really do anything to them big <laughs> and be bodying both of them. Like I don't care who's in the way. Yeah. I'm yeah. giving you 35 and 15 on the boards. That's what mm. I, that's that's what we mean by like just per dominance, like. You can't put nothing in my way that can stop me. You know what I mean? You can put something in a way that can that can stop Jokic um, from being as effective as he is. Now, he does. I'll give you this. He does switch from, okay, I'm not going to score. I'm just going to get everybody else involved. He's the best big to ever you know, mm-hmm. have that type of addition to his game where he's not feeling it from the perimeter. He can't shoot. He can't even get in the post. So guess what? He's at the top of the key, and that boy addition, dime for dime for dime um, mm-hmm. to some incredible uh, you know players that he has on his team. But um, but when it comes to, like dominance, like I mean, you can't put nobody on that dude, man. Like if mm-hmm. he's gonna get what he wants, he's gonna get to the foul line every time because you gotta foul him. It's not Yo. like you can, you know, just stand in the paint and you know battle with him. He's gonna mm-hmm. you, you're gonna have to foul him. He's gonna get to the free throw line 15 times a game. Yeah. And he's gonna night with 35, 40 plus on you that's right. um, because you couldn't stop him. But that's what that's what I mean by dominance. That's not to take away from Jokic. Yeah. And then the dude's making 88 percent of his damn free throws, like. As a big, it's crazy. Is that well, eighty-eight percent last year? As a big, sure. LeBron can't well, do gonna, that, but that's a different. You know. Chill out, chill out. I'm gonna, ask, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna ask, I'm gonna ask y'all this one question, and then yes. I'm gonna let y'all go because I'm not gonna hold up your show. Okay, I can talk basketball all day. No doubt. As, as a player, mm-hmm. if you're who are you? Who are you are gonna be more fearful? Fearful of? A guy that's, that, that's going to drop 30 or 40 on you by himself mm-hmm. or if a guy that you game plan to stop and he gets the whole team to kill you, who are you going to be more fearful of? I think, personally, this is going to sound crazy. I'm more fearful of the guy that's going to give me 40. And the reason why, when when somebody is dominating like that, they can demoralize your whole squad. 
defensively. And that bleeds over like, like Shaq wasn't, and I'm not comparing him beat to Shaq. That's not close. But what I'm saying is Shaq wasn't um, getting the assist or, or running the offense like Jokic or anything like that, but he would utterly demoralize teams when he, you know, get cooking and go to work down on that block. And so I would rather that because as long as I have a point guard, I don't need my center doing that. Like why? I don't need my center doing that. Go down there, grab rebounds, get on the block and do your work. I don't need my center running point. That's weird to me, but I'm, I'm a traditionalist. I, I would rather, I would rather uh, true positions. I don't like this positionless basketball thing. So, you know, um, that, I, that could be more a function of what I prefer, but me personally, I'm worried okay. about the guy that's going to give you 40. All right. You can. One guy besides Jordan, one guy is not going to kill you in a seven game series. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, he might get one or two games on you. Mm-hmm. Um, I get one it. guy's not going to kill you. It, it's more dangerous when you have guys that average six points a game in the regular season come in the series. They're as their averages is up to 12 and 13. And if you got five or six guys doing that, they're mm-hmm. going to be impossible to beat. Right. No matter how dominant you are on, on both ends. Mm-hmm. So, me, as a player and as a coach, to me, I'm going to make MB, I mean, not MB, I'm Jokic, beat me by himself and try to shut down his team. I got you, and I respect that. That's, no doubt. That 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 that's um how that's how I that's that's how I look at things. That look at look at things. Um, and to piggyback on what, on on what Transformer said, no, no one's going to ever be insane and say Nash was better than than Kobe Bryant. But mm-hmm. in those three years, those MV, those MVPs were were warranted because he was the Phoenix Sun. Like, I think he was just a better player on a better like, team. Uh, the, matri- like the Matrix elevated. Um, Sotomayor was nothing without him. Mm-hmm. Um, he got Le- Leandro Barbosa. Look, he had made Leandro Barbosa look like an all star. He mm-hmm. was impossible to stop coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. Um, Boris Diaw um, turned into a, was a a legit sharpshooter because all he had to do was just post up and that's hit him and hit him in the corner. He made those that Sun team. Very dangerous. So, those three, I believe it was like three or four years. I mean, he was, he was dominating the game, but just in a different aspect. Mm-hmm. And he was dominated just in a different way. We look at dominant if somebody comes down here, he's going to drop 40 on you and shut you down on the other end. That's how we traditionally, old school guys, compare dominant because we compare it to who? Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's we set the standard on dominance. Yes. On dominance. Yes. So that's what we compare. <coughs> but we can never shy away another player because they do it in a different way. Nah, that's fair. That's fair. And I don't want no LeBron fans coming in here trying to piggyback off of that off of that either. <laughs> oh, um, you know what though? I don't. I don't think we nope, have nope, any. Nope. 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 Move on. Continue. Right, cool. No doubt. So, no doubt. I'll let you get started. Uh, I, I wasn't going to get started. I promise. Then. I wasn't. I'm not going to open up that can of worms because we know the last time we had that conversation. Thank you. <laughs> well, we got a, like four hours long. We got a topic with him next. So, um, but no, um, great yeah. stuff, Laker Nation. I appreciate you, man. You got anything else before we let you go? No, I'm going to let y'all go because, like I said, I'm not going to hold the show, hold the show up. All right, brother. Thank you for calling, man. I appreciate that. Absolutely. No go problem. Lakers. Laker y'all. Nation. Yeah, All go right. Lakers. One and oh, baby. One and oh, baby. Look, Shut man. Up, Bruce. Don't do it. Don't. Nope. Uh, nope. It's a beautiful moment that we're about to have in the next topic. Mm. Don't do it. Yeah, let's go to the next topic. I'm, t- up, baby? I'm trying with you, man. I'm trying. All right, Laker Nation. Thank you, man. Have a good one. I'm, mm, I'm trying. All right. All right. <laughs>